under consent agenda item A, this is April 4, 2022, special board of trustees meeting. It was actually a regular board. So we'll fix that right there and that should be it, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, would somebody like to make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda with modification and support. Okay, moved and supported. Um, uh, vote please. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clay Flowers votes yes. Mr. Selby, yes. Selby, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> What's that? I guess I, was, I don't know why I skipped that thing all the time. So let's, uh, we better approve the agenda. <laughs> all right, motion to approve the agenda. All right, move and support it. Vote, please. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Mrs. Cook Flowers, votes yes. Mrs. Lewis. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe, yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. It's amazing how you can do this once a month and forget how you did it the last month. <clears throat> All right, um, item six, uh, announcements and information inquiry. Uh, the township offices will be closed on May 30th, 2022, in honor of Memorial Day. The Highland Community Prayer Breakfast will be May 5th. That's this coming Thursday, yes. or this Thursday. Yes, at the Thrive Church, the doors open at 8 a.m. Tickets are twelve dollars. Yeah. Um, learn to clean and preserve grave markers on Saturday, May seventh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the West Highland Cemetery. There's a ten dollar workshop fee. Uh, could be pretty interesting. though. there's if you'd like to do that. It would help too. Got a lot of stones that could have some need some care. <clears throat> There'll be a special board of trustees meeting on Monday, May 16th, 2022 at 6 30 p.m. And that's going to be held at the current township hall, which is at 250 West Livingston. Um, Founders Day parade and festivities uh, are going to be held on Saturday, May 21st at 10 a.m. The Highland, they'll be uh, on Livingston Road and at the intersection of uh, John Street. Can you go back a little bit? We're having at the, where you guys meet now? The fire station. Fire, the, the old, old fire station. station. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Starting at the Thrive, yeah. Thrive Church, or were you starting at the Nazarene? I think they're still using both. Okay. Got to talk to you about that. All right, the Highland Garden Club plant sale is Saturday, May 21st, 9 a.m. to noon, and that'll be, they'll have their goods in the park, the Veterans Park. Seeing as the uh, backyard of the uh, town hall is a little messed up. Um, hazardous Waste Day is June 18th from 9 to 2, and that'll be held at the Highland Elementary School this year. The last couple of years it was at the high school. Now we're moving it. Back to the uh, was that Highland yeah. last year? Yeah. Wow, time it wasn't yeah. last year, it was no, a couple it's years ago. Yeah, last all right. Time. So, anyways, it's at Highland Element. All right, um, anybody, uh, we're I will ask, I don't think it would go over too well if I was there in the morning. I don't think that would go too well. You might end up being hazardous waste. Is what <laughs> Don't mess with brides. <laughs> All right. Uh, item seven, public comment. Anybody have any public comment? I have a public comment. Joe? Or, uh, Either one. I don't care. Oh, uh, first. Chief? <clears throat> Yesterday, the American Lung Association did their uh, annual climb for fight for air uh, climb at Comerica Park. Uh, we had six members from our department. Uh, participate in, I think there was over a thousand firefighters there that day. They were dressed up in full turnout gear, including air packs, and traveled uh, the whole upper bowl, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, all the way around the bowl. Um, I'm not sure how many steps it was total. They raised $1,660 for the Lung Association, and they were all young and fit individuals, <laughs> and they come back 
sweaty and exhausted. So it was uh, quite an accomplishment. I was very proud of him. Well, that's cool. I'm breathing heavy thinking about it. <laughs> it makes me think of Peru and Machu Picchu. Um, okay. Joe. So a reminder about Memorial Day, I'm in charge of the event again. It's probably 26 years now. Um, it is on. Uh, please spread the word to everyone to know that it's an important day to come and remember the shed blood of our men and women who lost their lives. Uh, we are having a few helicopter rides. In the YMCA, uh, ninety nine dollars per person, and uh, oh, fire eight, eight, eight or ten minutes. Oh, we will put it over the probably the fruit grounds and probably over Kensington or something. There is no stop at all. So it's a, we're not we're not responsible legally for it. It's a Yankee Air Museum is is putting it on, so it's a fundraiser for them. So it's kind of attached and created. So. How neat. So it's all like that. Rain or shine, that's great. If it rains, you bring an umbrella. That's what umbrellas are made for. <laughs> and galoshes. And the only complaint I want to hear is I couldn't find a place to stay. That would be important for us. Which is usually the case. Thank you. And I have a picture of a lot of your students from the high level tank. Yeah, I know. All right. I thought that's really funny. So I have to say, we're talking about flags. Are you doing the um, morning stuff? Are you still doing the morning stuff at the cemetery? Yeah, that's already been publicized. Yeah, uh, Highland Township Cemetery, uh, West Highland. What time is the one there? It's eight, eight o'clock right there. Eight o'clock and thirty will commence. It'll be on our Facebook. The brief ceremony will so come early, otherwise. Come early and tell you. We'll have flowers planted at Veterans Park before that. Uh, it was a revolutionary war grade the placement of remarking and we were right to do right to that. And uh, I saw the maybe a George Washington Revolutionary War uniform to be the theater for the Oh me. Wow, he, I knew the guy was old, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Peter's been around. All right, I say something real quick. We did a last Wednesday, we had my students went to the Highland, the VFW Mall. Uh, Mr. Olt has been he helped us out and, and interviewed Vietnam veterans on one of the projects. And I was very impressed with the whole thing. But they read, I get a chance, but they've read down the ceiling, they've got the people who passed away and all the members. Every tile is somebody's name, and it's, it's really, if you get a chance to go up there in the back room, it's, it's really impressive. And I was talking to Tom about it. He said, over during COVID, they, he, they had seen that somewhere else, and he worked on it. It's really neat how they've got it. Every tile's got somebody's name, it's got the seal and everything on it. It's really, really, really cool. So, it's got a yeah. fundraiser for him. Oh, okay. Not everybody who passed away. Like, no, 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 no. You're, no, no. <laughs> some, I would say, some have passed away, but lot, it's, it's almost, is it? I don't know, every member? I don't know. How do you get up in the ceiling? Not just a member. Yeah. Not the member that they've done. Right. Just a floor there. So, anybody from Highland? Is that what they did? Anybody. Anybody from Highland, Milford. Okay. That's very impressive. So, all right. I just asked to add an item to the agenda under new business, and I didn't do that. Um, can somebody maybe make a motion to add 146 North John Street? I understand the closing is tentatively scheduled for May 18th. Okay. And you're going to need authority to sign all the related documents to close on the purchase. Okay, so. Uh, uh, uh that would be pending business no it? 10 new business is oh wow well. no it's the real estate oh. it'd be nine b okay so i'll make the motion to add to the uh um agenda um to lisa how do you want to put that just call it 146 North John Street. Uh, to uh, 
authorize supervisor to close on property. Sign on doc and then the motion would authorize you to sign on the documents related to the closing of the purchase. That's 146 John. If you prefer to do it at your special meeting, I have no problem with that, but we'll need that before you close. Now we should do it now and then we don't have to be thinking about it. Okay, that was a motion. Um, somebody want to. Yeah, I made I made the motion. Super support. Moved and supported. Okay, so this is to add this item nine B to the agenda. Uh, vote, please. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clerk Powers votes yes. Mr. Sauter, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mr. Hamill. Mr. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, so. Um, we were going to have a presentation tonight, but they bailed on us. No, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> okay, I want to introduce uh, Amanda Cronk from uh, Plant Moran. She's going to present um, our 2021 audit report. And uh, yeah, we're done with public comment. I guess we are. Nobody else responded, so. Um, so we'll move on to the presentation. Uh, let me, uh, I think I have to share the screen here in order to make this happen. Shoot. Cancel that, forget that. Magic show. Hold on. It, I heard a woman's voice in there. Yeah, are you sure somebody didn't want to add public comment first? I don't know. I, Justin usually handles that. Justin, was there anybody that wanted public comment? Nobody made themselves known. No, there's only three people on besides the two of us. Okay. It could have been Siri. All right. So we got to get all this extra stuff out of the way here. Let's move this up. And well, that goofy thing is in the way. Do you want me to go up there and push a button? I don't know what that says on there. Vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my shortest presentation. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Thank you. Oh, it just says that the post or meeting is being recorded. Oh, okay. Don't care about that. That's what the lady said, Beth. <laughs> All right, so now voice. slideshow. Um, do I do a slideshow or just go through them individually? You can go through them Let's just do it this way. Okay. Yeah, rather than have it check out on me. All right, just let me know when you want to switch gears. I can do that. Well, thank you everyone for um allowing us to be here in person i i feel like this is you know trying to get out of COVID, right um, so it's great to great to be here in person um, and, and speak with you tonight so um, as rick mentioned my name is amanda crank senior manager that works on your audit with me tonight is nicole hart she is a, a senior and also was on, on your audit engagement this year um, she has i had the privilege of coming to a board presentation like this. So uh, I thought this would be a good one for her to sit in on. So she's gonna, she, she's increasing your, your audience. There we go. Um, okay. See, I did bring my groupies. Yes, I, did. I did, I did. Um, so a couple things that maybe looked a little bit different than last year's audit. I know we presented last year virtually through Zoom and we actually did the audit remotely last year, but this year we had the privilege of getting back out in the field and, and your team so graciously hosted us and worked through the audit and i know you guys have a lot going on here logistically so we thank you for that um, we, we truly would much rather do the audit in person so i was glad that we could do that this year um, in front of you tonight i did hand out the graph presentation so you do have that in front of you that is just a summary of your financial statements which you should also have in your packets um, so instead of going over the 40 plus pages, I've summarized a few highlights in our, in our graph presentation for you. 
You should also have a copy of our end of audit letter in your packet as well. Um, I will cover a few highlights in that for you tonight. So instead of, um, as I mentioned, instead of going over your bound financial statements, I did, um, I did just want to point out a few things um, in the presentation. So um, maybe first before we get into that, um, I did just want to point out that pages one and two of those bound financial statements all are your opinion letter. So that is what you've engaged Clamor and to issue on your financial statements. And I'm happy to say that that's an unmodified opinion. And what that means is that your financial statements are free from material misstatements. So again, we come out for two weeks or so and, and camp out in, in your conference room and ask a lot of questions and look at a lot of documents and you know do a lot of testing all to arrive at this opinion letter. Um, so we did not identify any journal entries that needed to be made to your books and records, which um, you might be asking, well, that's, that's great. What does that mean for me? And what that really means is the information that you look at in your meetings and that you're making decisions based on does not require us to make a lot of audit adjustments or any. We had no audit adjustments this year. So you should feel confident that you're making decisions based on sound financial information. Um, so if we were coming in and making a lot of journal entries and things like that, you know, that, that may raise some red flags about, you know, the decisions that you're trying to accomplish here, but you can feel confident that that is not the case. So I'm pleased to let you know that. Um, so I think what we'll do is maybe go through some of these financial highlights. I did have a few things I wanted to point out about your year. The first slide is really going to focus on revenue sources. And you might remember um, from prior years, but we do take a look at general fund and the capital improvement funds together. And we've done that because a lot of the, the revenues that go into the capital improvement fund are actually transfers from your general fund for certain projects. So it, it would look a little distorted if we only looked at one or the other. So I have meshed and merged those two funds together on this slide for you. And Really, if you looked at this information compared to last year, all of these percentages are really very comparable. I think the largest shift, if you will, was really that gray half of the pie. Um, so that, that piece of the pie went from 49% to 52%, and that's really your state shared revenue allotment um, and some grant revenue. Um, so again, that really just went up because your state shared revenue went up. So, um, pretty, pretty easy correlation there. One thing I did want to point out that you won't see in this revenue or in your financial statements as revenue or expense is anything related to your ARPA money. So the township did not spend any of that money by December 31st or have eligible expenditures. So that really is an unearned revenue. So it's really an asset and a liability in your financial statements. As we move through the next few years, that's going to change. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about those changes kind of as they come. So for now, you didn't recognize any of that ARPA revenue. So let's change, change gears a little bit and look at the expenditure side. This you saw quite a bit of change. <clears throat> so you're going to see the gray, that gray piece of the pie at 39%, which is your public works. That went up significantly due to the Township Hall project. So the, the pieces of your pie are kind of changing with that, but your public works expense did go from approximately $74,000 to the planned $1.7 million. So again, you're going to see on the next slide, you've been saving, saving, saving for that renovation project in particular, and now you're, you're, doing, you're working through that project, right? So you're spending and making those renovations. So that really, that increase in your public works expense is what attributes the change in your general government percentage. Um, your general government expenditures though remain relatively consistent, but if you looked at it as a percentage of the pie, um, it, it did change, it went down. But again, that's due to public works in, increasing. Your other categories there, social services, recreation and culture, public safety, all remain relatively consistent. So. You really had a really consistent year from a revenue perspective, 
And again, you're making those planned investments as you know, as you've been planning for over the last few years. So as I mentioned, the next slide, we're going to really focus on your fund balance. And th this really tells the story, right? You've been saving, saving for that township hall renovation project. And, and now you're really working through that project and, and seeing those improvements. So the 2021, the far right hand column. I just want to talk through real quickly what these components of your fund balance are. So that largest bar, the blue bar, represents resources that are assigned um, for a particular purpose, and that really is your capital projects. Um, so again, you've, you've thought through what your needs are over the next few years, and you're setting aside resources to fund those, those improvements. The orange bar there represents your unassigned fund balance. And you do have a fund balance policy, just to remind everyone, um, your minimum your minimum goal or your minimum threshold, if you will, is 40% of expenditures, your maximum is 60% in that unassigned. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, that unassigned fund balance is really, you know, your, your leftover, I'll call it. So your, your operations and, and things like that in the general fund, maybe something unexpected comes up. Um, so your goal as a township has been to have that number be in that 40 to 60% range. You are at the top of that range, but again, you're, you're working within your policy um, to make sure you're monitoring what your unassigned fund balance is at your home fund. So no concerns there, just wanted to make sure that you knew you were working within the range that you set for. Next, I wanted to just take a really quick look at the township as a whole. So what this slide is showing you is all of the township activity, which includes long-term assets and you know long-term liabilities. So infrastructure, capital assets, along with any debt associated with those assets. So again, focusing on the 2021 bar, that gold colored bar is really your investment in all your capital buildings, equipment, infrastructure. Now this does also include your water fund, so keep that in mind. You said it does? It does include your water okay. fund, yes. So this is everything, all assets, all liabilities. So that was probably the big jump between 2018 and 2019. <clears throat> exactly, when yes. we took on the water fund. Exactly, so Tammy, that's a great point. So when you brought in that water fund a couple of years ago from the county, when the township took over ownership of those assets, Tammy, you're exactly right. You picked up a lot of assets with a little, there's very little debt over in the water fund. So huge pickup of assets. The orange bar there is restricted, meaning you, you have some restrictions there from a third party. So in your water fund, there's some debt, debt restrictions there to make those debt payments. Um, and then you have a little bit of restricted um, in the general fund. And then the teal bar is left up, is, is what is, un, is unrestricted, is the technical term. So again, resources that can be used to fund township operations and things like that. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, the good, the good part is you as a township have very little debt. So you're funding things as going instead of bonding for projects. <laughs> Any way you could add a couple zeros to those numbers? I'm like, who am I sitting next to? I, I said that for the chief's benefit. I wanted to see who's going to catch on there. <laughs> yeah, don't look at me. I just thought of the numbers. Well, uh, Amy's so, listening. She can. <laughs> so again, you're you're in a very strong position. Again, your OPEB is very well funded. So from a liability standpoint, you're you're in a very strong position um, for the township as a whole. So um, nothing negative to report there. This slide just shows you a very quick snapshot of the water fund activity this year. Um, as Tammy mentioned, this is a relatively new activity for the township. This is the third full year um, that you've been reporting the water fund in your financial statements. On the left. Less your operating expenses. 
And I do tend to break out depreciation expense on this slide because it's not a, a hard, to, you know, it's not a dollar amount outflow. That's just users of the system and the system itself depreciating. So it's not a, a cash outflow per se, um, but it is an expense nonetheless to that fund. So this fund did have a little bit of an operating loss. Um, and I, again, it's just something to keep an eye on. Um, the perhaps a, a different metric you could look at if, if you're curious would be how that fund is cash flowing. Um, and it's cash flowing very, it's, it's cash flowing well. So you did use about $40,000 of cash in that fund this year, but again, you have, you know, your cash to operate. You're not in a, you know, in a negative position by any means. So again, just continuing to monitor these metrics, making sure that, you know, if, if your costs to operate have gone up, have we thought about how that's going to impact this fund? So you're in a fine position right now, but again, we all know how quickly things can change. So just continue to monitor that activity. <clears throat> Are there any questions on the slides? The slide that we buy the uh, escalators. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, right? I know. No. Nope, you did not buy any escalators this year. I was like, where were you going? <laughs> no comment. Stairway to heaven. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's. So activity, very well. You had a great year. I, you've got a lot of good things happening. I mean, we're in this beautiful building. Um, you know, a lot of things that you've saved up for and you've planned and done planning. And I know your team has put a lot of work into these projects and um, you know, you guys should feel really good about the year you had. Real quick, I did just have a few comments on the letter. Um, so every year we, you know, not only audit the financial statement numbers, but we do really spend a good amount of time auditing your controls. So controls are an important part of the process. And on page two, I just wanted to quickly mention that we did have a recommendation for that we talked through with management um, regarding your controls around the general ledger and who has access to add and remove users for your general ledger system. Um, you want to make sure that the person that can add and remove people doesn't have too much access to do other things in the general ledger. Um, so we made some recommendations and I know management's been, you know, thinking about different ideas on how to make sure that those controls are tightened down. Um, so I just wanted to point that out here um, for all of the, the board members. The remaining pieces of the letter are really a follow-up to the letter that we sent out to all of you when we started our audit. If we had any exceptions in our audit that rose to the level that we needed to communicate them to you, we would do that in this letter and we we had nothing else um, to present to you. So again, we didn't have any journal entries to the books and records. So I hope that you all feel good about that because that is very commendable. I know the township has worked very, very hard on that. Um, Judy is shaking her head yes. Um, she remembers and Jeremy remembers very vividly, you know, even just three or four years ago where we, you know, and I really commend your team for all of your hard work. I know having us here for two weeks disrupts your team and we just appreciate all of all of your hard work and attentiveness to our staff. So section three does just have a few legislative items. I know the world's changing really quickly. Um, so we try to keep you as updated as possible. So there is some information in here should you you know be curious on any of it. Um, nothing that I, I thought we needed to chat about tonight, but certainly if you have questions, you know. I know, right? Well, sometimes there are uncorrected mistakes. So. <laughs> Very astute. Um, so the township does pass on a few adjustments just because they are, are cumbersome to make and they're, they're very small in comparison to your financial statements as a well. whole. So um, there are a few adjustments that the township did present to us and did choose to pass on, and it was acceptable. They weren't significant to your financial statements. So very good, very good. 
So I know this is a lot of information. Uh, I'm sure that you were excited to read the financial statements. Um, but are there any questions that any of you have that I should? You're welcome. And you know, you're you're 100 percent right. I I don't personally have many audits where I get to come and say that um, because you're right. We're all human. You know, it it takes a lot to get all of these pieces moving in, in harmony, right? Um, and even on the accounting side, there's a lot of debits and a lot of credits. So again, we we appreciate all of your hard work. Yeah. Karen and Amy spend a ton of time working on this together. <laughs> it's been quite a learning curve. Learning curve and they are quite the team. Yeah, yeah they are. I think we found one error in the billing from plant management. Overcharge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of value there. <laughs> <laughs> um, just saying. Yeah. You know, you bring up a great point. The world isn't getting any simpler either. You know, even you just accounting be standards yeah. that you have to adhere to from whether it be a state requirement or GASB. I mean, there the world isn't getting any less complex. I mean, look at our, you know, you got to follow a lot more standards now that you got a lot of federal grant revenue. I, I wish I could stay here and say things are getting easier, but they're not. So again, your team, I, you know, your team has done a great job of trying to stay one step ahead of all that especially if you're getting all this new grant revenue. Uh, so just continue, you know, we're always a resource. You know, we have some resources in this letter for you to use as a, as a you know, as a link. And, you know, certainly you know how to get in contact if you have questions. So we're always happy to do what we can to assist. The audits have changed a lot too. I was reading it today and it really tells the person that does read it what we're doing. The notes in that. Yeah, the notes are kind the of notes, incredible. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knocked on my door and we lived like way back. And I just like flew out of the chair and I'm like, oh, he's reading the audit. Well, <laughs> she's having trouble sleeping. <laughs> hey, no, you have the no, but the notes are really good. I mean, it just, it makes it very, well, easier to understand. And it's definitely transparent. Good. When someone could pick this up and read those yeah. and understand what we're doing as a township. Yep. And that, that should always be your goal, right? Is, is Absolutely. That, is that your residents can, can pick up a document and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe not a lot of it is accounting jargon. I, I get that and, and standards and things like that that we have to adhere to. But the goal is to always pretty clear. Yeah, is to, you know, benefit the reader of the statement. I want to say thank you to you guys again for another good year working with us in spite of our craziness. They got to enjoy working in the beautiful building yeah, with yeah. us. It was, uh, I'm sure, a memory. And I look forward to the new building. I was super impressed. Honestly, <laughs> with your, you know, it's great. It works well. And then I also want to tremendously thank um, Amy and um, Karen, I should say, Amy LaVoy, our head bookkeeper, and Karen Jensen, our deputy treasurer. They do a lot of work to prepare for this. And um, not only have there been a ton of changes in accounting, there's, you know, going through with the building projects and even just transitioning to the new building and, and all of that. It's a lot. And, you know, I think sometimes uh, people look at, uh, you know, other staff members might be slightly annoyed because we're demanding certain standards and it's only because we want it to be right. And um, that goes for all of us. It's not because we don't like anybody or we want to be mean. It's just because we, want, we don't want to get to the audit and worry that we're going to get dinged for not doing it right. So they like to be mean too. But no. What's that? So they like to be mean too. No. Just kidding. 
<laughs> and then also I was going to mention um, these audit documents are uploaded on the um, township website. There's a page called the dashboard, the financial dashboard, which started under Judy. And we're keeping it up with adding the current year's audit. So anybody that wants to go out there and look at it, they can do it. And that way you guys can do it too if you don't hang on to your, your audit reports year round. You can always go on the website to pull it up. Well, thank you all again. Is there, is, are there any other questions? Nope, you guys did a great job, so. It's been a cheap presentation. It's an expensive presentation. You want to take these back and just modify them next year? No, <laughs> I rework it every year. Well, thank you all so much. Well, thank you. We greatly appreciate it and the collective effort. Your assistant's name again? Nicole. 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 <laughs> okay, so now because we really appreciate all you've done, we're going to ask you to stay through the rest of our program. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You don't have to. No, thank you very much, and uh, appreciate it. So we'll see you probably sooner than later. Yeah. So, yeah, and thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks. Yeah. Have a safe ride home. Later. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, so that was a good chief. Did you see that presentation? That was to uh, figure out how you get the extra zero at the end of our budget. So, <laughs> I was all on board when you said that. <laughs> so, all right, we'll move on. Move on to the next item, uh, pending business. Um, item A. Um, I'd like to get a resolution to. Uh, Approve the submission of fire millage uh, proposition to electors. We have somebody make the motion. I would move to approve resolution 22 09 to approve submission of fire millage proposition to electors. Frederick, Four. second. Who wants it? I don't Beth. care. I think Beth got there first. You got beat on that one. All right, uh, vote please. Are we ready to vote? Anybody have any questions on this? It's pretty much what we said last time. Okay. I'm happy. All right. <laughs> we'll vote then? Yep. All right. Um, Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Yeah. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Yeah. Mr. Hamill. Mr. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item was the item we added to the uh, pending business. Um, I'm going to exercise my legal, eagle legalese that I just found. Cheat sheet from the uh, attorney here. So I'll, I'll make the motion to authorize the supervisor to sign all documents necessary to effectuate the closing on the property purchase of 146 North John Street in accordance with the previously approved purchase agreement. Cooper support. Okay, there you go. Moved and supported, uh, vote please. Or discussion, anybody have any discussion on it? Okay. All right, ready to vote, Mr. Hold on, I'm sorry. So this means that the, um, they they accepted the offer, and so this will be the closing. Okay. So we'll become the uh, owners of the parcel. And these funds are coming from capital improvement. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Vote. All right, Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> All right. Um, new business. Um, let me get to that one there. Resolution water rates. So this next item is a uh, 
we need a resolution to approve the the 2020 resolution 2020 or 22-10 um, Charter Township of Highland water supply rates. Somebody want to make a motion? I would move to approve resolution 22-10. The Charter Township of Highland water supply rates. Support anybody? Support Sylvia. Okay, move to support. Anybody have any questions on those? I feel like we should probably explain a little bit. Um, there were some increased costs, and as the auditors noted, we didn't quite break even in the fund last year. So, um, they, the county proposed some an increase, but it won't affect anybody that is getting the minimum bill. Okay, because we have the minimum bill, which is set up for a certain amount of usage, and a certain number of people will fall within that minimum usage. Right. And then back to the majority of users. The majority of users. Yeah. Most people get the minimum bill. So it probably would just be the people who use a lot of water. Grass waters. Yeah. Is the Water Resources Commission still responsible for the delivery system of the water to the locations? They manage our system. So we are res we're responsible because we own it. But uh, they do all maintenance and and uh, they manage the the fund and everything else. So this one did not roll into the motion or so. Comment on that. Can I yeah. make a comment? Or yeah. Uh, a person who had a building of the valve bringing in the water source in was not functional anymore, and they said they would not repair that. It's their it's their supply line. Say that again, I didn't quite hear. The source of the water coming into the building. The shutoff valve mm -hmm. is not working anymore. It's not functional. They're responsible. The building stops at the curb box. There are other valves upstream yeah. of the curb box. So yeah. is it so not upstream of the curb box? Okay. No, it came into the building, but it's not working right now. So they, they stop at the right way. Okay, thank you. So it's like so right out by the road, or more or less. All right, so we had a motion and somebody seconded it. Who seconded? Joe did. And uh, we have discussion. So, um, any further discussion? If not, we'll vote. We vote, please. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe? No, yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mr. Hamill? Mr. Hamill, yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, the next item, 10B, is Oakland County Sheriff's Office 2022-2024 uh, Marine Patrol Services Agreement. Um, the individual lake boards and lakes can't engage with the county. So the township is responsible for that engagement and the agreements through us. And so this is <clears throat> the agreement that we pretty much approve every year. So, uh, so we wanna make a motion to approve the agreement. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Any discussion on that? Anybody? All right, uh, vote please. Mr. Howe? No, votes yes. Mrs. Cooper? Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick? Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia? Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Mr. Hamill? Hamill, yes. Motion carries. Okay, the next item. <clears throat> C, award bid for purchase of office furniture for new township offices. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is in the, in the process of all of this at the end, when the bids came in, um, 
Beth and I made a, I would say, a, not what you call an error, but uh, I'm not going to blame it on Beth, but as much on myself. <clears throat> it turns out there's supposed to be two elected officials open the bid. And we were there at five o'clock when the bids came in and we opened it up and Tammy is, was at home and um, we had had a conversation a day before and I had made something about what well, we could look at them in the morning. My thought was, is we just look at the bids in the morning. I wasn't thinking about the policy. So the thing I'm going to do is ask the board to, um, uh, I'm going to make the motion to waive board policy on the opening of the bids, which is uh, two um, elected officials so that we can move forward with it. So that's my motion. I second. Okay, uh, second. So uh, anybody have any discussion on that? Okay. Beth Corman and I sent out to tease the park these proposals. <laughs> yeah, we teased them. <laughs> so anyways, that's the first thing we got to get past is uh, um, we have to, you know, watch the policy. And it's not that and Beth and I both kind of remember something in the past that was uh, you needed one elected official and one other um, person in house, but uh, apparently that wasn't it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pink. It keeps everybody calm. All right. So, um, um, question another question. Yep. Bid opening. Um, at what point do we open them at the board level? Vehicles normally, if we're taking. So it's not like a dollar threshold. Right? No, it's no. not. The, it, in the past, as long as I've been here, it's only been for vehicles. We could request that for anything, and it would just be in the ad lane. I'm assuming. Okay, it would well, just... I assume that's what was happening because the bids weren't in there. But... Well, anyways, you'll see what what transpired with us because it yeah. it is yeah yeah it is kind of it it's got some complications to it, but um, nothing that was so, negative. Yeah, the reason we open the vehicle bids at the board table is because it's very simple. It's just a dollar. You know, where when you take a bid for oh, something point. you're buying, you've got to really examine it and kind of think about is this really a good you know comparison to each other? And I know that um, there was it was a rush to get it <laughs> ready for the board packet, and the bids were just due on Monday night, okay. so there was very little time, and that was the cause of the issue. Lauren short, short, I screwed up slightly, so that's why I'm asking to, <laughs> for forgiveness. <laughs> so we'll have a vote on that, please. I would have been, um, um, Mrs. Cooper. Cooper, yes. Mrs. Frederick. Frederick, yes. Clerk Flowers votes yes. Mr. Salvia. Salvia, yes. Mrs. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe. Mr. Howe votes yes. Mr. Hamill. Hamill, yes. Ocean carriage. All right, so now we can move on to the next part. So. <clears throat> We had initially um, had a group come in and do uh, kind of work through our plan, um, a group called Right Size. And uh, what they did is they, they looked at the, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. <clears throat> the original um, quotation for uh, what the expected expenditure on furniture was through the architect and, and the summit, the general contractor. And the estimate was at 270 some odd thousand, 275000 dollars So when we were having one of our weekly meetings, I uh, recommended that uh, we pull that from the, the contract for the general contractor <clears throat> and that we would establish a, a budget not to exceed 170. Uh, 5,000. So it's like take a hundred thousand out of it. We should be able to get this furniture for less than that. I was pretty sure that I'm, I mean, to the point of being positive that I knew we could do it. Um, so we did that, which means that now we're responsible for dealing with the furniture, where before the architecture would, architect would order it and, you know, or the contractor would order it and it's whatever was specked out by the con architect. So, um, Generally involved in that is a percentage goes to the uh, architect and a percentage goes to the general contractor and that's all on top. So this is a way that we can uh, affect the overall cost of the building and it allows us to actually do some change orders without having to worry about going over our initial uh, budget. So 
<clears throat> Beth and I got excited and <laughs> went right, right at this thing on Monday morning or Tuesday morning. And uh, what's that? There was five that we received and there was seven that I uh, had um, actually contacted people with for these bits. So uh, Beth and I got working on it. And I'm going to give 99% of the credit to Beth because she put together a spreadsheet to be able to do these comparisons. Um, it turns out that there was um, some comparatives that were in your pack as a spreadsheet. And I'm sure if you looked at it, you probably were, what uh, is that? So basically what it boils down to is, is there's some things that each of the contractors did that were different. And one of the things we've learned is that uh, the first group that we talked to, we were asking about different styles of, of furniture. And one of the things that I was, I would say I was adamant about was not buying any of those standard dividers that we like we had in the other building because all of their electrical is down at the floor in a track that, uh, so you have to connect these things all together. And if you want to plug something in, you got to go under the desk and your, your butt sticking out. And it's just very, it's very uncomfortable and very uh, unwieldy. So it turns out there's a company uh, called a ASI. Is that what it was? AIS. AIS. Sounds like our uh, company in Highland here, uh, who has a system that, um, brings all the wiring up right at desk level, but it's hidden by a little door. And it allows you to plug all your stuff in, wire, you know, ethernet and everything else without having to bend over to the floor. And it hides it all, you know, and then the desks are also able to move and slide back and forth. So anyways, their, their system was very um, interesting. Um, so the in-house officials and Beth, we went and looked at this furniture installed in another company. And so then what we did is we put out a um, request for proposal, pretty much the same thing these people did is they came back, they looked at our furniture layout that the architect drew, and this was their proposal. And then we, I sent that out, which is the, uh, the document view. This was the uh, bid document here proposal. And that actually was a PDF that you could blow up. And I asked them, each one of these contractors, to quote the colored areas, uh, just as we had been um, had looked at before, minus the auditorium. Um, and then uh, also that they could, if they thought appropriate, use um, remanufactured or or um, reproofed, whatever you want to call it, uh, components. So they each had the same request from them, and they sent back differing levels. <clears throat> and so what it turns out is there's only two companies in the state of Michigan that can sell AIS furniture. So that means there's two contractors. Um, and the irony is, is that it appears as though they knew the other one was bidden. And so one of them bid the same company, but a completely different uh, formula, right. which turned out to be cheaper and really not, not cheap. And they were cheaper because they left some stuff out too. They didn't, they didn't bid all the stuff we asked them to. Um, so there's things like, you know, the management of getting all the furniture in. Are they just going to deliver it and drop it off the door and we have to do it? Or So those are some of the things that uh, were left up to the individual companies. So after we started pulling all these pieces apart and parts apart and looking at it, um, that's what the spreadsheet was, uh, was to accomplish. So it came down to where the, the final numbers here um, Beth, you're the one that worked on this thing. Um, I think what, um, we broke it down to major yeah. groupings, like the workstations, the time and out, the furniture, right after the, yeah. the public yeah. area. Yeah. 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 Cost for tiles and some did time songs for tiles. So the level of field, we gave everybody allowance for tiles just so that we had apples and apples and apples. And then we realized when we were looking at it, they all 
we'll also make us a class for the chair that would be appropriate for the auditorium. So we might as well figure that in here too. So we took from their bids the auditorium chair, put that in so he had the whole, all the furniture for the whole project. And at the end of the day, they, the three vendors that we thought were most responsible are all pretty close in price. Mm -hmm. What's that? They might differ in one of the components, like one, maybe the workstations are more expensive for AIS, but they have features that the others can't offer. The you know, lobby furniture from AIS is maybe not up to the same par that some of the furniture from the other vendors that we like offer. So we know they're all competitive with each other. They're all playing in about the same price range. But some have strikes in one area rather than the other area. And is there any thought of if you want to buy their desk and somebody else's lobby furniture? We're heading in that direction on the conversation. So the way this is presented is um, because we had to get this thing put together, was well, is as if we're going to award it to one vendor. And the reality is what I'd like to do is I would like to build to have the board approve a not to exceed number of 170,000. And the rationale behind that is, is that we, that was pretty much the number I said we wouldn't go past uh, when we did our official budgeting. But the other thing it does is it allows for flexibility. There's some other things that we, we could change or modify. Um, maybe there's some furniture that uh, would be nicer for the lobby than was presented. Uh, so, and then the other part was, is, you know, like on uh, one of the bids, the, the, the board tables had these big kludgy legs under them. You know, the little, not the board table, but the um, uh, conference, conference rooms. And one of the contractors had this table had these really nice metal legs on it, you know, so it was kind of like, oh, you know, that, that'd be kind of nice if we could do something like that. So if we do a not to exceed number, we're still looking at um, my mental number that I'm looking at to not to exceed personally is 140. And I still think we can do that. And that's to get, that'll get us the, uh, you can the, buy the best product and Right, so and pick and, choose. and allows us right. to actually, yeah, to be choose what you would like instead of being stuck with one right. And every one vendor and your stuff we don't really like, but you might want to do that. But with that comes a, a, a different type of approach. Um, if you remember when we were looking at engineers, we vetted the engineer, mm -hmm. and what I'd like to do in this case is to vet three of the contractors, th three of the suppliers. Uh, so what that allows us to do, I better look at those. Beth, you got those? Um... The, if you look at the spreadsheet, the two that are um, out are the ones we really weren't Right. So, so it'll take a couple motions, but the idea is we'll set a not to exceed price, then we'll um, vet three of the office furniture may, um, suppliers, um, which would be the right size, MOI and Kentwood. Now, MOI was um, <laughs> Western Michigan office, something or other. And they had um, Hayworth was there. Yeah, they had the same workstation systems that we had in the office room, the ones that we bought in 2006. And I believe they were, um, those were re totally remanufactured. Now, um, right size was AIS, that was all brand new. So, and completely different look to them, I mean, completely different. Um, then Kentwood, Kentwood was, was very right. similar to Hayward. It's just a and, the, and both of them had the rigid panel system that had the power in the bottom on the floor level. So, um, but their pricing was very similar. Their, um, I mean, they're, they're, these were companies that were, I got from the state website that uh, have bid multiple other, you know, schools and universities and, and uh, that type of thing. So I, I have a, um, a sheet that um, I took it from, took all their names off of, and then I personally contacted each one with an email and this, 
this request for quotes. <clears throat> but I think that what it allows us to do is to be able to now we can go back and, and what's kind of critical here is there's a 10 week time frame that uh, from order point to minimum receiving the product. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't end up putting it out there too far. But um, as, as Beth and I have kind of talked about, and that's the other part is that, you know, I'm not trying to take away any excitement from anybody picking out furniture, but um, I think that if we can kind of, so Beth and I can work on it. But I, I, I just have to say, that I, I want to say it in, in public. Um, Beth has done such a phenomenal job with not just this project, but since we've gotten into this building, not just since then, but before, but since we've we moved to this building, she's stood out like a, a star. And uh, I'm telling you, she, she, we sat down there and she had this thing nailed, you know, and I, it's just was. What is the timeline for completion? December. No, end of, end of October. October. Oh, end of October, yes. Right. So we've got to get the word on there plenty of time because they're coming in for short December. Except that there is some anticipation that they may be done early with that building. Well, in, in either case. Not to affect her, not, and not that we would be moving into it necessarily, but. In either case, we can put the order in so we're safe. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> cost increases. Cost increases. We actually had a cost increase occur the 1st of May. So there you go. You just added some. But these all reflect that cost increase. Like Pat was in the proposal says, if you don't order by May 15th, add $5,000. $5,000. 5, and maybe we'll change the order. I'm just curious, because this isn't the time to ask, but um, did all of the proposals include, like, not sure exactly what your Well, it, it is kind of, I would say, um, kind of modern, but it's not. Uh, One of the reasons we excluded very desk is they are the most spartan, yeah. modern desks and furniture you would care for, and there's like no storage space. It's like they expect you're going to pay for this office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's not my dad. But there is a I lot know. of options yeah. when you get to start looking at the public spaces in particular. If you want to make sure you're on site, because that's the nice thing right now. Is there any furniture that has been salvaged? Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's another part of it is that um, Beth and I think all of us in house officials have looked at the like my office and Jenny's office and you know the leftover furniture and all the, the main offices, there's nothing wrong with it. So the idea was we can pull that out of the bid, which is significant. And so that one one twenty nine, if you pull those out of it, it all it goes down. So that would allow us to be able to then put in the electric desks. Um, It would be, it would well, be we some of what was offered in the packages, and there's nothing better than what we were. But yeah, that would be the one with the open spaces, the private offices, offices to be a little more in, in the open area. area. We want all that to be yeah. somewhere. Great. Right. Um, we, I think we have in there file some file cabins, but not. One of the bids, two bids had about twenty thousand dollars in file cabinets. 
Yeah, well, that was kind of one of the things we thought about. So, it's, and to be honest with you, if you the cabinets moved from the old building to the temporary building, full, and the amount of time saved, and screwing up files and make having stuff disappear and having to find things, that's worth a, a its weight in gold. And if they can make it back to the new building and not be obnoxious looking or something, like you said, you can paint them, they still work fine, then we'll, we'll consider using them. And at a future date, if somebody thinks it's a schmuck thing to do, they can buy new ones and do it at that time. But it's not, I mean, we're spending enough on the building as it is. Well, I just, sometimes you, can, you gotta take stuff off the new building. Yeah, but I think what we have, I got to read that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so is are you trying to do this in one motion? Is that your suggestion? I think we can. Okay. Cool. All right. Attorney is our attorney has crafted another um, brilliant motion for us that I would have. Done in two parts. This, I like this. Um, so I'm gonna I'll make the motion to award the bid for township furniture in whole or in part to one or more of the following bidders: right size, WMOI, or Kentwood. WMOI at the discretion of township supervisor in an amount not to exceed one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and authorized supervisor to sign contract. So we'll end up with a contract either with one, two or three of them. And uh, this will be the kind of a blanket authorization to sign those contracts. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't bring this stuff back to the board because I think at that point is when we should. Um, Support settlement. Okay. And that was my, my comment was that I think if you can at least provide a summary to the board that we could just put in consent agenda, you know, for whichever meeting it lines up with to say, this is what we ended up doing. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yes. Is it possible the vendor might say, gee, I did this for the total and I'm not going to get the whole thing because they could cause it to change the price. No. Well, it, it could change the price of an individual piece, but the other side of it is, is that it would be, Kind of interesting to see how vendors. I don't think most vendors ever see that happen. So usually you expect to get the whole kit and caboodle. Well, that's what I meant. So I mean, people gee, I, I discounted some of the stuff. Right. This, but, this. but that's the that's the the uh, vendor's problem. Do they, do they know? <laughs> do they know that we're doing this right now? Yet? Okay. No. I'm just bringing up as a point of discussion. Yeah. yeah. Having been in you know the position of bidding on projects one of the things i learned right away was don't discount anything that is gonna probably hurt you and, and that's what happens well some business is going to help us yep versus the other side okay yes i think you mentioned it but i just wanted to clarify do these bids include the installation piece of it too yes it will that'll be part of the thing is that uh the the one that was very clear on that was the um right size they actually, they actually will set everything up. So we don't have to do anything. And that's, that's pretty critical when you start looking at the construction of the desks and how, it, you know, plugging all the, the stuff in. And actually everybody except for Mary, which we excluded from your recommendation, did charge us installation fees. Yeah. Yeah. So we Right. Right. Size, uh, size, um, says they've got a big two, YouTube guarantee or something where it's kind of like a concierge service. You have a problem with any issue now. Welcome back. They have a lifetime warranty, whatever, you know. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So the three bit ones that you guys want to go with are similar. They're 166, 167, 166. Right. And you're only asking for 170. 
Yep. Are you sure you don't have to come back to the board if there's just some kind of change or anything? No, because okay. I just want to make sure. like I said, if you take out the uh, office furniture, yeah. okay. it significantly changes. Sure. Yeah. Because you guys are on a short time frame. I'd order it right away. Right, so I would like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I made the motion. Did somebody support it? Okay, so uh, any other questions? All right. Um, Vote, please. Can I get my chair and hibiscus? Oh, I love hibiscus. We've got that for you in the car. The collar, I think All right, we're voting. We're voting, sorry. Mrs. Frederick, we're voting. Yes, yes ma'am. Frederick, yes. Mr. Flowers, yes. Mrs. Lewis, yes. Mr. Howe, Mr. Howe, yes. Mrs. Cooper, Cooper, yes. Mr. Hamill, Hamill, yes. Motion, please. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much on that one. Um, it's it was. I think that I kind of like to get a comment from Jenny and Tammy. They they saw the furniture. I mean, there's some things that are. are there's some things to write about it. Some things are wrong about it. It was <clears throat> more modern than what we have, but it was fine. It wasn't over. I just worry about the. It was a computer where you punched it in, like how high you were, right? You, hit, you, you, you preset your height that height. you like, and you can have a couple of heights. You can have a standing and a sitting, and then you just hit a button that goes, mm, yeah. And, like and the, other, the one of the things that was described was uh, yeah. they will literally lift 350 pounds. So, in, so they're not, I right. Our office, so, um, yeah, it was neat. I thought it was, it was nice for the open areas. Yeah. yeah, it was great walkthrough. And I don't know if you saw that they did put out a welcome to their showroom opening soon. Yeah, in which June, will be in June uh, second or something. Southfield, I think. I didn't. I don't know the location, yeah. but uh, if you Google the website, you can yeah. see some videos of the, the right size. Yeah. It's called right size. And if you actually, they have a video you can watch. It shows how the whole system works. And one of the reasons why you don't have a firm number for anybody is their options. I mean, you don't have right. to take what they configured. Shelves, bookshelves, cabinets, yep. I mean, fabric, fabric colors. Okay, so yeah. Yep. So now um, I really appreciate it. Um, next item D award to bid for sale of vacant property, southeast corner of West Wardlow Road and North Hickory yeah. Ridge Road. So many bids. <laughs> Zero bids. Zero bids. None. Really? We had some inquiries. Well, that's why we didn't see the bids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that I think we're gonna have to put that one back out there and then just if we did get bids, would that be that we wouldn't have to do that like in closed session or anything, right? Because we're selling it. You can go into closed session to consider the purchase of property. Okay. Thank you. Sale. So um one of the things that people kept mentioning when they were asking about the property is they don't know if it'll perk. Um, so that would probably be worth the um, that would be worth the uh, investigation probably to do that. Right. What do you think, Beth? Yeah, it's good to do the applications to do a closed session. Yeah. 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 And have a health department witness as if though you were, yeah. What's that? It's, yeah. So um, what I can do is um, there's a the community for community sharing. They're going to do a, a trench for the electrical, which I'll be digging. There'll be an excavator available. We can take the excavator after we're done with that. Got it rented. I'll. Uh, work with the Frank, the uh, health department individual, and we'll go punch some holes in the ground where we, he feels appropriate. He did look at the uh, soil um, layout of the land, and it appeared that it would, it should hold up for septic. But you, you never know. Yeah. Yeah, three and a half acres. Plenty of room, but it's a soil soil makeup. If it's all clay or if it's uh, yeah. got. Well, it's 3.42 that says five acres. Yes. That's the, the, that's the zoning. zoning. But one house can be built there. 
So, so you can't if split you look it. Look at the subdivision across the street. The uh, six lots that are closest to Hickory Ridge Road have to be served from a community septic because it didn't hurt. So I can understand why it hurt this one. Larry. Um, Lisa? Just a uh, comment. I, I'm working with another community right now that's selling property at an auction. I've never been through this process before, but basically you set the bottom line and then they take it. And, um, if it doesn't get the bottom line bid, it doesn't sell. That's kind of what we did. <laughs> but this we, is someone doing the work for you. Yeah, we set a larger scale. Right. More people looking at it potentially. All right, so we'll, I think we'll just move that forward, get the per test done, because I have a number oh, of people ask the same question. Handful. And I couldn't I answer wouldn't it. I would say more so. than five that I know of. Inquiries, I would say maybe five. That you, the you heard of. That so heard there's probably of. 10, because I had five different people that okay. asked me, and they all asked the same question, does it perk? Right. And the house next door has a subject. Yeah. yeah. Well, presumably. But as Beth said, the house is across the street. Across Wardlow. Across Wardlow had to Isn't put it into a community septic because it did, theirs didn't work. Fully subdivision. So but there was just a group of them in the back. All right. Um, so on that note, then uh, we'll we'll readdress this at another Thank point after we get a per mm -hmm. test on it. Okay, I thought we wanted to see it. it um, do I need to have a motion to approve doing a perk test on that property? It's not that you're doing it, so it's like less yeah, than yeah, well, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> then we don't have to do anything on that. Everybody agrees we'll move forward to try and yeah, verify the perks yeah. and yeah. get the thing sold. Uh, and then <clears throat> we'll also uh, probably put the other 15 acres up. Um, I haven't heard anything back from Mantua's, uh -huh. and I don't. Hi. Yeah, I know we'd get at least one bit on that one. So, but all right. So on that note, um, meetings adjourned. Seven forty-eight. Wow. Still light out. Oh. Okay. Thank you, everybody. It's going to still be light out. Yeah. Soon.